Hey everyone, welcome back to the weekly Monday Motivation Podcast, No More Excuses, where we tackle challenges head on and empower you to be the badass you were meant to be. And yes, let's take charge of our own success, right? Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the podcast with others. And if you haven't, why not? I am your host, Sandy Ballard, the badass business coach. And I'm also a DISC certified coach, which really gets me excited to talk about the topic, you know, and dive in today's topic, dive into it. And, you know, it's been a tough one. This topic's been a tough one for, for well, for, since businesses began, but since the vid, since that pandemic, people have had trouble hiring, right? And it's still critical for any business to hire the right talent. So yes, that's today's topic, hiring the right talent. Over the years, I've had clients who just seem to have a revolving door of staff. And, you know, although I'm not a recruiter, nor an HR expert, I work with those companies to identify what's going on, what's keeping people from staying, what's or keeping people from not accepting the job if you do offer to them. You know, and one of the big things is onboarding. What's your onboarding process? What's your training processes and procedures? If you don't have an HR company in-house or one you use on contract when you need it, this is the one time I would highly suggest you do because HR issues and, and are, are huge, but also getting that onboarding and training process and procedure nailed down is going to help you hire the right talent and achieve the success and the strong badass team that you want, right? And this ties in to the badass moment of the week. This one uh, comes from Lisa, who struggled to find the perfect fit for her team. And after firing, hiring, oh my gosh, hiring an outsourced HR company who created these new onboarding and training processes and strategies, she was able to finally hire, but also keep the talent she needed. Because you know what? It just, it's not always easy. Not everyone gets the type of training they need. And that's where the DISC assessment comes in because once uh, my clients hire staff, I send them the link to take the assessment and then we know who we're talking to, who we're training, how to communicate because if they're a high eye on the on the DISC, D-I-S-C, on the DISC assessment uh, profile, eyes are not gonna wanna sit down and be told to read a manual or it's in the manual, it's in the manual. How many times have you heard that, right? If you're an SC, Cs especially, you want the manual, you want to know the rules, the process, the procedures, but eyes, they wanna be shown what to do. Yeah, videos can be can be helpful, but help, help them by, help, and help yourself by helping them, show them how to do it. Maybe back that up with the videos or a little bit of both, but don't tell a high eye person uh, to just go read the manual or read a book about their job. It's not going to work. And I've seen it. I've seen it where somebody's two weeks into the job and they quit. And then you look at that and go, well, what's your training process and procedure? How are you helping them? And then I also had two managers who were com- are completely opposite. And the one was newer. So the other one was sort of helping him find the way and learn some things. And guess what? She kept saying, well, we have a, a, that written down. It's written down. It's written down. I bet he never even cracked that book open. And I said, show him. So he learns by being shown. So again, you know, it's no, no secret that building a dream team can make or break your business. But why is the why is finding the right people such a challenge? <laughs> well, firstly, it's all about identifying your values and needs. A mismatch in these these areas can lead to friction and inefficiency down the line. It's not just about does that person have a pulse and can they make it to work, right? And secondly, there's the daunting task of sifting through all the countless resumes, conducting the interviews, hoping to find that perfect match. And let's not forget about the fear of making the wrong choice, which can 
paralyze even the most seasoned entrepreneurs because they may have done it before and they're like, oh God, here we go again, right? And I, I do have a client and if she listens to this, she knows uh, she's done this for herself. She's done all the hiring for, for years. And she did, to my suggestion, use an employment agency for, for a short time. However, the options that they were providing of potential staff didn't seem to be working. So it's like there was a there was a disconnect in what are they looking for and um, who is the agency representing, right? So you got to really make sure it's a right fit for your industry. It's like anything. So even hiring an agency can't always work, but they can work. But you have to communicate with them um, and be really specific on your core needs, your values, your goals for the company and your goals with the person coming on board. And I reached out to a colleague of mine who does run an employment agency about this challenge and, and sometimes the, the disconnect between a company and um, an employment agency. And she was like, yes, Sandy, one of the biggest challenges is defining what the right talent means for your specific company. It's not just about skills and qualifications. It's also about cultural fit and alignment with the company's values. Additionally, the hiring process itself can be time consuming and resource intensive, especially for small businesses with limited manpower. And if you're not growing, maybe not the fun, you don't have the funds to hire out. So it's that do it or pay for it mentality, right? If you can't afford to pay for it, you gotta do it. So it's looking at is, is hiring and sifting through all that a good use of your time, right? It's clear that the hiring the right talent definitely requires a strategic approach and a deeper understanding of your business business's unique needs. Okay, business's unique needs, say that 10 times, right? I've tried to say it twice. <laughs> As I've discussed many times, it, the hiring process you know, for yourself, is it a good use of your time? Many times you'll say yes, but do it or pay for it, right? So perhaps you need to rethink the time you're investing in it. What else is on your to-do list that you might be putting off, avoiding by doing this? Because hiring is important, you know? So what is the priority? And if it's something you want to control or just can't let go of, why? Uh, you may have had a prior bad experience where you delegated the process to someone else to hire or delegated these other tasks. And it wasn't good. It didn't turn out well. So you got to sometimes just relook at things, make sure what you're doing, no matter if it is a hiring process or doing everything else that's on your business owner list and make sure that's a good use of your time. What is uh, the, what's the benefit of you doing it? What's the pros and cons? What's the pros and cons of you actually doing your other tasks and delegating it? So a lot of things to think about, right? And my client who recently, uh, she recently had to hire, she realized she was having trouble and trouble keeping them, but also just trouble finding someone. They'd get to that in-person interview. They'd do the, the phone interview. They'd call references. They would look up people and do some little research. And then they would get into the in-person, let's, you know, check out the office. Everybody's sort of interviewing everybody. And it just wasn't going well. And so she th thought about it for a while and we talked through and went, um, through this one, during one of the sessions and it came out that, you know, so I, was, I was like, where did you get all your longtime staff? And it came from a completely different industry. And it was like that, you know, big aha moment. Okay. So she went back to that industry and it's been working. Only one person didn't work out out of five because the culture, she just, the culture wasn't working for her. It was definitely more of an office that it is hundred percent more of an office setting than what she was working in. The, my client is, is an eye doctor and most of these people came from the restaurant industry. It's completely different industries. However, as far as settings and a restaurant is not an office for sure, but What's great about the restaurant industry, when you find the good ones, 
they're people centric, they're client focused. They're all about serving and making sure everyone in front of them is happy. So there you go. It's always about the culture as well. So now let's hear from you, the badass community for your badass challenge of the week. I'm gonna ask you to share, as always, you share your experiences and challenges with hiring the right team. Take some time to revisit your process. Are there anything, uh, what needs to be improved? Any areas that need to be improved? Are you prioritizing the cultural fit as much as the qualifications? Are you prioritizing the cultural fit as much as the qualifications? There you go. You can train, you can train qualifications or you can train them to do tasks, but you can't train culture. You that you got to find that good fit. So reflect on a past experience like my client did and identify ways to refine the approach. So perhaps you need to dig into a different industry or remember, oh yeah, that's where I, I found this staff or volunteer even, right? Remember building the team uh, is, is essential for your business and its success. So don't settle for anything less than the best, right? All right, that's a wrap for today. For no more excuses, there is no more excuses review your process. And if you're not someone that hires, maybe you're a sole prop like me, maybe you still do have to hire someone. Maybe there's a lot of virtual assistants out there. There's a lot of vendors and people you collaborate out there. So you can use this process for them as well, because not everybody, even if you're both own your own business and you're collaborating on something, have the right uh, values or have, the, I'm sorry, have the same values and have the same goals in mind. I've done that with events over the years, came in, thought this was gonna be a beautiful relationship. And at the end, we realized a couple of them just didn't have the same event experience. And it just was a little more challenging. Turned out great, the event turned out great, but you know the communication wasn't quite there. And all that. So you've got to really vet the process. And I think even I, we just all got excited. We thought we were on the same uh, level as far as the event and type of event, but we weren't on the same level of experience and communication. And there it is. It happens. We got excited. We jumped in and we didn't vet each other. So there you go. You don't have to be hiring staff to use this process, all right? So don't forget to subscribe, share a review, and then until next time, stay badass. Cheers.